The toy knife, the frailest weapon in the entire game. It can strike around 200 times from full condition before breaking, and it's one of a kind, making it more of a collector's item than a valid form of self-defense. In today's video, we'll be finding out if you can beat Point Lookout using only a toy knife. After getting born, I chose a name, became my dad's roommate, assigned points, choosing 9 strength for more damage, 9 intelligence for more skill points, 6 endurance for a slight boost to overall health, 6 agility for a slight boost to action points, left luck at 5, lowered charisma to 4 just in case I needed the child at heart perk, not sure why, and lowered perception to 1. After aging 10 years, I got a Pip-Boy 3000, antagonized Butch, and killed a Radroach because I had to. Don't hate me. Three years later, I took the goat, chose explosives, lockpick, and speech. One more year in the vault was all I could take, and I decided it was time to leave. Grabbed the utility jumpsuit from the dresser, and convinced Butch to help his mum. I didn't really care what happened to her, I just wanted the Tunnel Snake's jacket. Outside the vault, I hit level 2, increased barter, explosives, lockpick, melee weapons, science, speech, and chose the Black Widow perk. Now, before heading off to the riverboat landing, I had a few things I wanted to do first, namely looting Springvale and going to Megaton to disarm the bomb. After I had, I hit level 3, increased barter, medicine, melee weapons, and chose the Swift Learner perk. I then went to the sheriff's house, grabbed the strength bobblehead, and promised to help Walter fix the pipes. Long story short, I forgot to increase my repair skill to 25. My plan was to wear the utility jumpsuit to increase it to 30, and then fix the pipes. But thanks to my idiocy, I was two points short. Don't worry, I had a plan. Leaving Megaton, I went southwest, discovered the riverboat landing for later, swam across to Rivet City, and grabbed the intelligence bobblehead from the science lab. The repair skill is just one of the many skills governed by intelligence, so with this and the utility jumpsuit, I now had enough. Fast travelling back to Megaton, I fixed the pipes just as I promised, drained Wadsworth, took a nap, and went back to the riverboat landing, where I met Catherine, a woman searching for her daughter, and Tobar the ferryman, who sold me a ticket but wouldn't take me to Point Lookout unless I was sleeping. Pretty sure I shouldn't trust this guy. After arriving, Tobar suggested heading over to the nearby mansion to investigate the smoke. That's a good start. But first it's time to get a weapon. Or toy, would be more accurate. The toy knife can be found near the Turtle Dove detention camp, where robots, ghouls, and mercenaries all roam. On my way to the toy knife, I crossed a bridge, got ambushed, went swimming, met a vicious dog, ran away, got blown up by mercs, found the toy knife, got chased by a glowing ghoul, and didn't stop running until I discovered Haley's hardware. As I mentioned during the introduction, the toy knife can strike around 200 times from full condition before breaking. That's not a lot. And right now the knife has around 20 hits before it becomes more useless than it already is. But thanks to Haley, we can repair its condition to 37% and increase its damage output by 1. It's not a lot, nor is it going to last that long. In fact, I tested it out on two scrappers and was given the low condition prompt in record time. Not a good sign. Heading over to the Calvert Mansion, I discovered the location, hit level 4, increased melee weapons, and chose the Comprehension perk. I then read two Grognak comic books, one I got from the vault, and the other, I'm sure Jericho won't miss. Before heading into the mansion, I fast traveled back to Haley's hardware and this is where things just work. If we get him to repair something, in this case it's the toy knife, then leave, fast travel elsewhere and return, his repair skill will have increased by 5 points, and we can repeat this process until his repair skill is at 100, netting us a foolproof way of repairing the knife to full condition as often as we want. I ain't met the gun I couldn't fix. With the knife repaired, it didn't get much better than this, so I went to the mansion, met Desmond, and helped him take out the invading tribals. I had no idea how many tribals I had to deal with, but I did know how many times I could attack. So I let Desmond and his two dogs, Freaky and Jerry, great names by the way, do the majority of the work, and only really pitched in when I felt it was necessary. After the initial threat was over, 
Desmond asked me to find out how the tribals were getting in and stop them. Sounds easy enough, but when you're using a child's toy, it really isn't. I was immediately overwhelmed and tried running back to Desmond, but he'd locked the door. I was on my own. Even with Vats, a tribal member took a monumental amount of hits to kill, and after killing five tribals, the toy knife was already well below half condition. Something about that health bar just screamed failure, yet I pushed on, heading upstairs, dealing with two more tribals, and then I ran ahead, which I really shouldn't have done. All this did was group the remaining tribals together, and thanks to them using both knives and guns, it was, simply put, too much for a toy knife to handle, and not a moment of struggling later, the toy knife broke. I reloaded, this time I took things much slower and faced the tribals as they came, but even then the toy knife still broke, and I knew at least three more tribals had yet to be dealt with. The toy knife, even at full health, simply didn't have enough to give, and here's the worst part, it can't be repaired with other knives. According to the Fallout wiki, only merchants can repair it, which is wrong, because alien epoxy can, but that's not going to be an option here, so I hate to say it, but I lowered the difficulty from normal to very easy. Reloaded to before I entered the mansion, and this time I didn't help Desmond with the invading tribals, and as a result, the knife didn't break. It was a small win that meant a lot to me, it gave me hope. And then Desmond said this, Hurry and seal that hole from the attic. If you don't have any grenades, then see if there's something nearby you can shoot that will explode. Maybe there's something explosive near the hole you can shoot. I wasn't going to just pick up a gun and shoot the explosive, nor was I going to use a grenade either. This was a toy knife only challenge, and I was going to see it through to the very end, even if that meant clipping through the door. I'm sure most of you know that I haven't done this before, and I think the fact that it took me 23 minutes to get through this door alone is enough to prove that. Even though I was through, I had fallen between the walls and loaded into the COC, or center of cell. I didn't want to be here, but that didn't stop me from looking around, falling down to the basement and getting overwhelmed. Reloading, I discovered my latest quick save was mid-falling, so I had no choice but to reload an earlier save and try again. Eleven minutes later, I was through, and this time I wasn't between the walls. I made sure to make a hard save so I could come back here anytime I wanted and hit the oversized fuel container with my toy knife. After the explosion, I was trapped by rubble, but the back wall disappears, allowing me to take the plunge to the COC. I then carried on until falling through to the basement and prepared myself for the can of whoop-ass I knew was coming. Running ahead, I learned that I once again needed to clip through to hit the explosive. The only problem was the amount of enemies getting in the way. I tried killing them, but the knife broke, meaning the only choice I had was to run past and try to find a way through before they killed me. Despite feeling under pressure, I did manage to clip through the door, getting stuck between the wall and a coat rack. In time, I did pass through the coat rack and I was in. Using the toy knife, I hit the canister, blew up, and sealed off the tribal's way inside. All I had to do now was get through the rubble. Two minutes later, I was between the wall and falling back to the COC. I had already passed through here, but now I had progressed the quest and the doors had become locked, which meant I had to wall clip yet again, and for some reason, I just couldn't do it, so I reloaded and went a different way. Desmond then entered, impeccable timing might I add, and despite his warnings that the tribals were making a last ditch effort to storm the mansion, they never came. I waited, and a door did open, but the only tribals to come through were dead. I checked the Fallout wiki, and other players had experienced this issue. They recommended resurrecting one of the dead tribals, and letting Desmond, his dogs, or the turrets kill them, which would then continue the quest. It was verified, but it didn't work for me. I had recently downloaded the Fallout script extender, and thought maybe that was causing an issue. After turning it off and trying again, nothing changed. Was this really it? Had I gone through nearly an hour of quick saving and quick loading for nothing? I didn't want to believe it, 
so I used console commands to try and trigger something. I unlocked the doors, but no tribals were on the other side. I could also leave the mansion, but that didn't help me either. I was close to calling it when I had a thought. Maybe dropping into the COC after the first explosion was the problem. Had doing that messed up the quest line? I wasn't sure, but it was the only thing I could think of. I reloaded back to that hard save I made earlier, and this time I clipped through the way I came in, spoke to Desmond, and witnessed the door breaking open. The same door that the three dead tribals came out of. Only this time they were alive. Not for long, mind you, but it was a good sign. Falling down to the basement for the third time, I used the same approach as before, run like hell, and pray I can make it through. I had done it before, so I knew it was possible, but I just couldn't get it to work this time, and the tribals were really testing my patience. Ten minutes of struggling later, I used console commands to kill everything so I could get a better look at what I was dealing with, and then I spotted it, a gap between the door and its frame. Reloading, I ran back through them like it was second nature, and clipped through in record time. One hard save later, I blew up, was on the wrong side of the rubble, reloaded, and then I learned that you can move the canister. So I moved it into position, blew it up, and clipped through the gap in the door. Getting stuck inside the desk momentarily, but a minute or so later, I was free. Desmond came through just as he had before, and then he said it. Get ready to counterattack. I did, and I had a bad feeling it just wasn't going to work. The door would open, and it would just be the dead tribals. Then, the door opened, and lo and behold, living tribals. Never have I ever enjoyed the sight of a half-naked man more in my life. Soon, the other doors opened, more tribals entered, and I helped, somewhat. Desmond then asked me to infiltrate the tribals by going to their base at the Ark and Dove Cathedral, and whilst there, try to find out why they're attacking the mansion. Outside, I had the knife repaired, swam across the river, and used the intercom to speak with those inside the cathedral. In order to get inside, I had to expand my consciousness by completing the ritual of the Mother Seed. Simply put, go to the Great Bog, find the mother of all punga fruit, and collect her seeds. To summarize this venture, I was chased by the locals, killed a few bloatflies, took a nap, entered the bog, avoided all conflicts with the swamp lurks, and gathered the much needed punga seeds. As I collapsed from the spores the mother punga had released, Swamp Lurk started attacking, and I thought I was going to die. But then I entered the fever dream, and they disappeared. On the way out I was belittled by Bobbleheads, said hello to Mum, she was as beautiful as ever. I also met Mr. Burke, but his name had changed, so had his voice. Before I got the chance to ask him why, the nuke exploded, and I woke up outside the swamp, where more bloatflies attacked me. <laughs> Back at the cathedral, the gates opened, and I met Jimson, a tribe member. I then got the Punga Power perk, asked about the tribe's leader, and Jimson said Jackson. So I went to look for him, but not before hitting level 5, increasing melee weapons and choosing the educated perk. Inside the cathedral, I met Croatoa, who gave me his fermented shovel, although I didn't need it, nor could I use it. I grabbed the rat away from the table, met Nadine, told her about her mother, gave her the note, and received the key and location to Jackson's hideout. On my way out, I filled my pockets with refined punga fruit, went cliff diving, died, and killed a swamp lurk, just to see how challenging they really were. The answer was, not very, so I increased the difficulty back to normal and went inside the wrecked sea tub to find Jackson. Inside, we learned that Jackson is just the figurehead, while the holographic brain is the one in charge. Speaking to it, we're asked to succeed where the tribals have failed, kill the ghoul at the mansion, and destroy his jamming device. I had no interest in working with the brain, so I returned to Desmond and told him what I found. Desmond then gave me a cogwave jammer and told me to attach it to the ferris wheel near the pier. Once there, the brain began talking, turns out he's a psyker, and once again, he asks me to side with him. I ignored his request, attached the jammer, ran to the pier, killed the pursuing tribals, and fast travelled back to the mansion, where it exploded into smithereens. Luckily, I was okay, and I hit level 6, increasing medicine and melee weapons to 100, 
also choosing the Bloody Mess perk. Searching the ruins, I discovered a panic room. Desmond was alive and well, but he was pretty miffed. He also seemed to know where Calvert was hiding. So, before joining him, I repaired the knife and followed him to a secret staircase inside the lighthouse. Desmond made short work of the robo brains and turrets, which is pretty much everything down here. At the end of the tunnels, we met the broken record, who asked me for the third time to betray Desmond. I said no and killed him. Or at least I tried to. Attacking Calvert with a toy knife, other than cracking the glass, does nothing. And for some unknown reason, Desmond wouldn't attack Calvert. Nor would Calvert's Protectrons fight back. This was really weird, and it wasn't working. So I tried a few different things. I sided with Calvert, killed Desmond, and then Calvert turned on me, and the knife was still useless. I then sided with Desmond again, attacked Calvert, and the Protectrons this time fought back. And even though Desmond fought with the Protectrons, he still wouldn't fight Calvert, leaving me back at square one. This was frustrating. A giant glass jar was the only thing stopping me from completing the challenge. I was running out of options. Reloading, I didn't interact with Calvert, instead directly attacking Desmond to turn him hostile. This made the Protectrons hostile too, and while they were duking it out, I noticed the glass had begun to crack, and not the pathetic cracks the toy knife made either. This was actual damage. Desmond then killed the Protectrons, and once they were dead, he went back to staring at Calvert. Even though it hadn't worked, I knew this was my way out. I tried a couple more times, but could never get the glass to break. I had one last idea before deciding it wasn't possible. If I loaded an earlier save and sided with Calvert, would that trigger Desmond to kill him, who we all know would double-cross me anyway, so this would take him out of the equation, leaving me to kill Desmond, and therefore completing the quest. It was a stretch, but it was all I could think of. I reloaded an earlier save, sided with the brain, destroyed the cogwave jammer, witnessed the mansion blow up, and hit level 6 again, selecting the same stats as I did earlier. Desmond was near the entrance of the secret tunnel, nowhere near Calvert, and I knew that if I sided with him again, he would kill the Protectrons and stare at Calvert like a brain-dead feral. So I killed him, went to Calvert, who betrayed me yet again, and at first I thought the Protectrons weren't working, but they were. And with enough patience and enough punga fruit, the Protectrons missed enough shots to break the glass and kill Calvert. It was over. I couldn't believe it was actually over. I had done it. Before I could declare the run a success, I had to make it back to the capital wasteland, which meant hitching a ride on the Duchess Gambit, Nadine had apparently ditched the tribals, and also figured out that Tobar was the one removing a piece of our brains. But I didn't care. I took a nap, woke up, and the run was officially complete. So to answer the question, can you beat Point Lookout using only a toy knife? Yes, yes you can. Be sure to show your support by liking the video, and subscribing if you haven't already for more Fallout content. If there's anything you would like to see in a later video, leave a comment and I'll see what I can do. With that said, thank you as always for watching, and I'll see you in the next adventure.